there, I'm Rebecca with Rebecca Over 60 and I want to welcome you to my channel and also to those of you who watched my last video which was about my simple makeup routine, I want to thank you because you don't know how hard it is to build a YouTube channel at this age and I've been kind of working at it for a long time but that video just sort of hit a nerve and all of a sudden I got tons of viewers. So I just want to tell you how much I appreciate it. Today I wanted to talk about what I've given up since I've turned 70 and that's right I turned 70 a couple of months ago and I still can't believe it myself. <laughs> the first thing that I've given up and probably you have too are uncomfortable shoes. I'm sorry, but I don't care what all the stylists say out there. I am not wearing high heels anymore. I wear flat heels everywhere, and that's all my feet can handle. In fact, about a month ago, my daughter got married, and I bought a pair of flat shoes, but they were pointy shoes. And oh my God, I think I wore them about five minutes and had to take them off, and I spent the rest of the night barefoot. <laughs> So my feet kind of got a workout because I was dancing too. Back there you might see this little dog. I'm dog sitting for my daughter. She's on her honeymoon right now. She's in Patagonia and she's really working out pretty hard. <laughs> she said that she walked for about, I don't know, like 10 hours and doesn't sound like fun to me. <laughs> I love hiking and all that, but I just don't want to kill myself. The other thing is shapewear. Okay. I never wear shapewear. I don't think I've ever worn shapewear. I did wear it at my daughter's wedding and that's probably the last time I'm ever going to wear it. I don't have a perfect figure by any means. I used to be skinny. I was skinny up until I was about 50 and then all of a sudden that menopause thing came in and my stomach just blew up to about eight months pregnant. So I'm still working on that. I'm doing everything I can to get rid of it. But for now, I can't really do a lot of styling videos because it's just, you know, I just don't look the way I'd love to look. But shapewear is kind of uncomfortable. One time I bought one of those camisoles I saw on Instagram and I swear I could barely get it over my boobs. It was awful. Okay, another thing that I have given up wearing are bras with wires underneath them. Now, as you can see, I am not flat. I don't know if it was breastfeeding my two kids for 23 months or what, but I went from about a size 32B to a who knows what anymore. I, I don't think I've even measured my, my girls. The worst thing is wearing something with wires that cut into my boobs. What the heck, you know? I mean, they're already kind of like going down there to my belly button anyway. What's a wire going to do? <laughs> Another thing I've given up, and you're gonna hate me for this, I mean, I know you will because I know you ladies, you like to wear pants with elastic. I have given it up uh, bows and leggings because they make me eat too much. <laughs> I love food. I eat really healthy, but I do love food. And when I wear something that has elastic, I don't think about how much I'm eating so much. So right now I'm torturing myself by wearing jeans so that I can feel everything that I eat. And I know you guys love leggings and you love elastic pants because I've been selling some stuff on Amazon. I have an Amazon storefront, which I hope you'll visit. It's pretty cool. It's kind of a nice little side gig for me. And the biggest thing that I've sold so far are sweatpants. I swear to God, I have sold over 600 pairs of sweatpants because they're just super popular. <laughs> okay, another thing that I've given up are wearing fat clothes. Now, as I said, I don't have a perfect figure, but it's so easy to buy those big fat blouses that just, you know, make you look like you're wearing maternity clothes or just stuff that's really, really loose. 
so I don't think it's really all that attractive. It's not really covering you up. It's making you look bigger. So I've tried to incorporate some styling tips like French tucks and maybe wearing like a peplum blouse or things like that. I'm an apple shape. Obviously, I do have a tummy. Body shape is very important to know your body shape, to know how to dress properly. And I know I'm an apple. <laughs> So I'm trying to adjust to wearing clothes that are much more flattering for me. There's a lot of tricks that you can do when you have a shape like that. You can wear blouses that are asymmetrical. You can tuck them in. As I mentioned before, the peplum is always a really good look. You know, just trying to look slick but at the same time be comfortable. The next thing I've given up, and I'm sure that a lot of you have given it up to, are pantyhose. <laughs> like, who wears pantyhose anymore, right? So, luckily as an apple shape, I have pretty decent looking legs. I'm really grateful for that. So, I just try to either wear like a midi dress or something that covers up my legs more but pantyhose are excruciatingly uncomfortable. I have found some tights that I like. I was given a pair of threads tights that I really, really like. I think they're really comfortable. And so there are alternatives out there. Luckily, I live in Los Angeles, so I don't have to worry too much about weather. You can probably hear my little dog back there. He's making a whole lot of noise. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> He, he loves it when you're doing a video. It's like, you know, he's got to make lots of noise or a truck's got to go through or an ambulance or something like that. Another thing that I've given up, obviously, is wearing a bikini. Like, okay, no, you do not want to see me in a bikini. But I did do an interview with two really funny ladies. I hope you watch it. They're called the Bikini Divas, and they're super funny. They have a TV show. Like, I know one of them, I think, is older than I am, and they just are rocking a bikini body, and it's just unbelievable. Another thing that I've given up is wearing big, huge, clunky jewelry. Now, I know Iris Eiffel has made a whole brand wearing this just huge jewelry, and she's like 102 or something like that. I mean, I think... That's great, I think she's amazing. But it's all that jewelry, it kind of weighs you down and especially if you're a petite woman like me, I'm five foot two, it, it just doesn't work. <laughs> I don't wear very much jewelry at all, but if I do, I just wear a tiny bit. I don't know, I just think it looks classier. Another thing I've given up are oversized purses. And that's another thing because I am on the shorter side, you know, it weighs you down. It also hurts your back. And at our age, <laughs> the dog is throwing balls all over the place. At our age, an oversized purse is kind of dangerous. You don't need to hurt your back. The same thing with shoes. You don't want to fall off high heels and hurt yourself, right? So we gotta think about those things. Another thing I gave up are smoky eyes. I obviously have smaller eyes, but they, you know, as because I'm 70 years old, I have lots of wrinkles and things like that. I barely put anything on my eyes. You can watch my video about my makeup routine so that you're not looking like a scary person. I just don't think it looks good on most women unless you have gigantic eyes like Bambi. Another thing that I've given up recently is having a boyfriend. I've been in two long-term relationships. Both my husband and my live-in boyfriend passed away from cancer. So I was the person that was taking care of them and there is no way in hell I am going on a dating site. In fact, the whole idea of going on a dating site is kind of scary. If I happen to meet somebody, you know, maybe could have a casual relationship, but right now that's just not a big thing for me. I'm not really into, I mean, it's not that I don't like, you know, playing around or anything like that. I mean, I grew up in the 70s. I graduated high school in 1971, so you can imagine 
the things that we did then, right? <laughs> we did a lot of stuff and I liked it. It was fun, but I don't know. The whole idea of a dating site is scary to me. And I kind of like the feeling of kind of being on my own. I think it's great. I, I like to be able to do things when I want to do them. I'm not beholden to anybody's agenda. I don't have to worry about somebody messing up the bathroom. I mean, it's just, it's kind of cool. I live right now. I moved into a house with my girlfriend from high school. Actually, she lives next door and then she built this small house on her same property. It's called an ADU. And there's another lady living there who's my same age. So we have the three of us. So we're sort of like the golden girls. And it's really cool. We have different schedules, so we have our own space a lot of the time, but we do a lot of things together. And I think that's the greatest thing of all when you get older is to have some girlfriends. For one thing, women tend to live longer than men, so it's great. I don't have a huge amount of friends because I've moved 28 times in my life. And so I was always kind of moving around and leaving people <laughs> here and there, but to just to have a, a handful of friends, I think is wonderful and we should always nurture that. Okay, and the last thing I'm trying to give up, and of course I live in Los Angeles, so it's sort of hard, and that's driving. Driving scares the heck out of me. People drive like maniacs, especially in LA, and so I have really embraced taking the public transportation. We have an LA Metro line, and so sometimes I'll take it, I live near Pasadena, so sometimes I'll take that and go walk around downtown or I could take it all the way to the valley. I try to avoid driving as much as possible. If I can get in the car with somebody else, I am more than happy to do that. It's not that I can't see. I actually, I had a problem with that where I couldn't see that well. And then I had cataract surgery and they fixed my eyes and I mean it's the most amazing thing if you are nearsighted or you have you know vision issues and you haven't had cataract surgery yet just wait for that because it'll fix your eyes and make you see like you've never seen before Hopefully that's something that you can do. Medicare pays for it and it's the greatest thing. I had both eyes done at the same time, which some people think is kind of crazy, but it was in the middle of COVID. So they decided to do that. And I am so glad I did that because it was like 10 minutes and it was over and it's the greatest thing on earth. <laughs> so now I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that I'm embracing now that I'm over 70. The biggest thing that I'm embracing now that I'm over 70 is good health. Let's face it, we need it, right? For some reason, I mean, okay, it's been about four years since the COVID pandemic. Neither me or my two roommates managed to get COVID. <laughs> I mean, it's like, what an achievement, right? Especially living in a big city. I don't know how we did it. I, I know we got all our vaccinations and we were pretty careful, but now, you know, things have relaxed a lot and somehow I've just managed to avoid that. But not only that, it's health in general. And that all comes down to eating properly, eating good food. I, I pretty much stick to a Mediterranean diet I'm not like giving up food groups or anything like that. Forget it. I can't do that. I'm a foodie. <laughs> but it's really working for me because I've had blood tests and they've all come out really well. I'm not on any meds or anything like that. Knock on wood <laughs> that that keeps holding. I think that that's the most important thing. I think one of the things that you can do is really watch, especially what you drink. I drink water, coffee, tea, and a little bit of wine, <laughs> just a little bit. I lived with an alcoholic for a while, so drinking too much of anything is a really, really bad thing. But 
you know, having a little bit, I think it's kind of relaxing and I don't drink anything like soft drinks or drinks with sugar or with sweeteners or anything like that. And I stick to real food. So I'm, you know, I'll eat a protein and a little bit of carbs and lots of vegetables and it's working for me and I'm sticking to it. The other thing too is staying fit. Staying fit, even though it doesn't necessarily help you lose weight when you're older, it helps your breathing, it helps your respiratory system, your heart health, and all that. And I try to keep it so that I'm not torturing myself at all. I walk a lot. I try to walk every single day from about a half an hour to an hour if I can. It's really great when I'm pet sitting because the doggy takes me out. Unfortunately, my two doggies passed away, so I don't have a doggy anymore, but hopefully soon I will again. But in the meantime, pet sitting has actually been really great for me. I, I like it. It keeps me fit. And the other thing I love to do is dance. So a lot of times I'll watch dance videos on YouTube, or I was also in the Silver Sneakers program and they gave me a free gym membership and I was taking Zumba classes. I kind of quit taking them because I had two kids getting married and didn't want to go to the gym and you know risk getting ill but I'm going to be going back and doing that as well. But in the meantime you don't have to go to a gym. You, there's stuff online all over the place so there's no excuse to not be fit. You just have to get up and move. The more you move, the longer you can move. That's my motto. Another thing I'm embracing is having a purpose. I keep myself busy. I've been blogging since 2008. That's something that I'm really passionate about. I've also been a voice actor for over 40 years. You might be able to tell I have this little kid voice. That's where I made most of my money in voiceovers was doing little kid voices. You know, I just try to have things to do that are exciting. I like to garden if I can. I grow little things like herbs and tomatoes. And actually gardening is one of the best ways to stay fit that if you think about all these people in the blue zones, none of them are going to gyms. They're digging up plants, <laughs> you, know? They're, you know, picking olives, things like that. Okay, another thing that I always embrace and I've embraced my entire life is having fun. I think that's so important. You can't take yourself completely seriously. You gotta get out and do things that make you happy and be around people that you enjoy. I think that's the most important thing in the world. Another thing that I have to embrace <laughs> is making more money. Now, I was not one of those smart people that had a nine to five job and built up a big retirement income. I didn't inherit anything from my husband or my boyfriend. So I've always had to hustle and I've always worked a freelance kind of thing. So I do a lot of freelance type of work through my website. I, there's so much that you can do online anymore and it doesn't matter how old you are. I mean, I was setting up websites. I learned all this stuff. I learned everything on YouTube. So if there's anything that you want to do, it's out there on the internet, just go for it. And there's also online classes all over the place. And I even have a blog post about that, of where you can find online classes and, and other things to keep learning for life, be a lifelong learner. I also, as I mentioned, I've been embracing friends. I think friends are so important. Sometimes you can get really isolated. I know that when I was taking care of my husband and taking care of my boyfriend when they were ill, all of a sudden you just find yourself alone all the time and so you just have to get out there and do things. I try to find meetup groups and other things where I can be out there with other people when I can. There's a great group right now, it's a national group called Friends Over 50, something like that. I'll put a link in the description. It's a national group so they do have little groups in, in other cities and it's a great way to meet other women over 50. Okay, and then the last thing that I've been bracing is loving and forgiving myself because as someone who's 70, 
There's a lot of things that you do in your life that you may have regretted. You know, maybe you just didn't do everything right. Like, like as I said, I didn't have a nine to five job. I didn't make a lot of money. So I've had to find ways to do that. And I'm glad that I did what I did. I really am. I, I think I'm a good person. I think that even if you've made really, really horrible mistakes, you can always forgive yourself and move on and just change your life. So that's what I want to leave you with. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to like this video, subscribe, click the notification bell because that alerts you when I make another video. I don't make them all the time because, well, I'm trying to. I'm working on it. I just have so many things going on and I'm like a one person band, but I do the best I can and I'm so grateful for you to have watched this video. I hope you made it all the way through and till next time.